This entertainment production is brought to you today by the Samurai Aquatics and Decor MetaVenture. Scan that QR code or click that link in the description and dive yourself headfirst into the Samurai Aquatics Discord server to pleasure your peepers on our current and future range of outdoor decor. The Wine and She Show is a Metaverse and NFT discussion and interview series brought to you by Metaverse Ventures Entertainment and host Ben68 and more cheese. Warning, the information and opinions within are solely the views of the individuals involved contains content not suitable for anyone. G'day and welcome to episode 50 of the Wine and Cheese in the Metaverse Show. Today we talk to Jeff from the Laughing Otter about his project, his goal to bring positivity to the community and bringing people from all over the world together. So sit down and get ready to get happy, you miserable bunch of bastards, for another Kumbaya episode of The Worst Show Ever. Wine and cheese. Time for wine and cheese. Wine and cheese. Time for wine and cheese. Cheese. One is a wanker, one's like it stumps, one's from Australia, one's from the Bronx. Hello, welcome to Wine and Cheese of the Metaverses show. This is episode 50. Five zero, nothing. Fifty, fifty, thrifty, fifty, swiftly. thrifty, nifty. <laughs> we have Ben sixty eight, and down here we have Jeff, and he's going to be talking to us about the Laughing Auditor later on. But first, we're going to be going over some, you know, articles and whatnot for the metaverse. Yeah, we have been complaining for several weeks that why is Upland never in the news? Well, guess what, cheese? Guess what I found? We found it. You found the, uh... Oh, I was just clicking through and I searched Upland News and what do you know? There's one that came up just a few hours ago or a day ago or something like that. Four important frequently asked questions about the Upland Metaverse. Now, where is this altcoin buzz? All right. All right. Altcoin buzz, yes. So there you go. Um, I had a so, quick skim through. Yeah. And yeah, it's pretty good. It's just like a basic heads up article. Like if you've never heard of Upland before, this will get you up to speed. So, you know, talks about what is the Upland Metaverse. The Upland Metaverse is a real estate game based on real life. Their team built it on the EOS blockchain. Uh, what makes this game unique is that your in-game assets link to real life values. Um, yes. Uh, did that mean properties? Values? I don't know. So, yes, you're buying actual representations of in real life real estate when you buy properties in Upland. Um, so, yeah, that talks about the new cities. So, San Francisco, Las Vegas, Rio, Porto, with the new expansions. Talks about the Alpex token, um, KYC process. So, you can buy and sell NFTs for US dollars. So, I think it's a really good overview article. And now it also does dig into who are the founders and that sort of stuff. So, oh, nice. So we got some information about Dirk, who we know, Idan, who we know, and the um, reclusive Manny, who we never, ever hear much about. So. Yeah, I didn't even know his name, to be quite honest. Yes. So, okay, that's uh, a pretty, pretty good article. Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, they they mentioned the cars. Did they mention anything about the businesses, the Meta Ventures? Um, I don't believe so. It just talks about, is Upland Metaverse a good investment? Oh, they're using that word again. Uh-oh, investment. Um, <laughs> so it says, yeah, everything in Upland <laughs> is an NFT. You can buy and sell NFTs for US dollars. The site is not a scam and the NFTs are real. Upland players have already cashed out over $1.5 million with over 2.5 million players and 600,000 active monthly users. Okay. Upland has good user stats, yes. And just, I think it's, here, just be aware that you can't trade Upex. Sorry, Jeff, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I think it's good that they're showing who the, the founders are because I think that's one of the the biggest indicators of whether or not something's a scam or not and what you're getting involved in is who are the founders. Um, so yep. it's 
Um, I think people are getting more and more leery about just uh, doing business with an avatar or spending their, their real life money on, uh, on people they've never met or don't even know where they exist. That's so. true. I, I totally agree with that. And uh, just to kind of like brag a bit, um, I went to Upland, had a Genesis event um, this past June, in the, in the beginning of June, and in Vegas. And I actually went with my husband and we met Dirk and Idan. Oh, nice. so I actually met the founders face to face. face to face. And I got a signed book. Yeah. Nice. So a good salute here. It says, the Upland Metaverse is an exciting place to be. The game has over 600,000 active monthly players. Players also, oh, so it's just a rehash. It seems to be a good investment and the game still has growth potential. Still has growth potential. There's been no mainstream attention at all yet. So yeah, the growth potential is massive. Yeah, um, it really is. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so that was, that was cool to see. Yeah, well one. done. Good job. Yeah. Good job. I, th I think that 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 also highlights one of the the opportunities for this whole space in general is just um, when when tech companies start really learning about uh, sales, traditional sales and marketing, and getting the name out there. Uh, that's that's huge. Um, you know, when you see companies like Algorand and uh, people like that making deals with FIFA to be right there in the the front page that's that's where web3 is going to get mainstream is um is when we actually talk about it outside of the closed circles in the communities yeah yep. i love your canadian accent <laughs> <laughs> i hear it <laughs> um and and fifa that's the uh the soccer right yeah yes. yeah that's yes. We, we just signed uh porto well we i say we but we, we are kind of like a we because we're UC and broadcasters. Uh, Upland signed a uh, uh, football deal over in Porto, right, Ben? Yes. So the Upland team has a deal with the FC Porto Football Club. So they can sell like NFTs of their jerseys. They call them legits. So they're basically like trading cards within the within the game. So they do that with. Um, yeah, you... with the, the 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 European football and the American football because we have the NFL PA as well. Absolutely. I think that um That's pretty cool. I think there's going to yeah. be a bit of a turf war here with um the various metaverses looking to sign up all these deals and a lot of the articles that Cheese has found that we'll get into in a second is kind of alludes to that. Sorry Jeff, what were you going to say? Oh no, that's pretty that's that's pretty cool. Um mm -hmm. I did I did see Porto uh, on my honeymoon. Uh, I'm not a I'm not a soccer fan. I really um, I grew up watching hockey and <laughs> um, and so the whole diving and stuff just doesn't sit well with me. But anyway, but we were in uh, uh, we were in Portugal and on my honeymoon, so you uh, just had to go to a game. It it, it was good fun, like <clears throat> for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, if I was there, I would have I would have wanted to check out too. That's pretty cool. I like that. I like that. The cool thing about the Upland Metaverse is that you could you could potentially go and buy the hotel that you stayed at. You could go and buy yeah, it in the Metaverse. Mm. Yeah, it was a nice hotel. So, <laughs> <laughs> so all right. That's I think funny. that's a I think that's a good segue into the first article that Cheese has found for this week. Now, Cheese, maybe you can give us the heads up here. We've got DBS enters Metaverse in tie-up with the Sandbox to create virtual better world. What's DBS? Some kind of banking thing? Yes, I believe it's a bank in South Korea. Uh, Singapore, it, it says. Singapore. Yeah. Oh, what Singapore. All right. So, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So it's uh, creating a meta Metaverse virtual world that will allow users to experience building a better, more sustainable world. Uh, Dub DBS Better World, it will be accessible to members of the public, including non-DBS customers for free. For this venture, Singapore's largest bank is partnering the Sandbox as an Ethereum-based decentralized virtual gaming world. I'm sorry, that's just freaking hilarious. They wanted to create a better, more sustainable world, so they're going to name it 
DBS better world. Like you couldn't think outside <laughs> the box a bit more. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I think what's also um, really interesting uh, is one of the, a year ago when I joined, like when I became really aware of web three and I just, and the, the decision was made to pivot the laughing otter into uh, a web three DAO um, kind of thing. And all the rage was we're going to, we're going to disrupt uh, traditional banking and the way things are, the way thing the world works and all this stuff. And I still believe in that. Like, I still think there's going to be lots of opportunities, but then all of these big boys are starting to partner with the exact same people that we all said that we were going to disrupt. So, yes. um, I don't, what's really happening. I don't know. Um, people so, want to cash those checks. Yeah. It's, <clears throat> and, and that's, you, you get, I, uh, sometimes I get run out of town at like uh, blockchain events and that, uh, and maybe it's because of my vintage. Just, I guess that's why you guys had me on your 50 show because I'm actually over 50. Um, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so because of my, because of my vintage and kind of my years in, uh, in the, the business world and just experience that, I'm, I'm sometimes a voice of reason that people don't want to hear. And mm. um, when you speak out and you go, well, you know, we can still do this, but, but don't be so naive that, you know, human instincts and human greed is just all of a sudden going to disappear and we're all going to um, sit around and, and uh, <clears throat> uh, sit around a virtual fire singing Kumbaya and it's all going to be wonderful. These. No. The, the, these these banks and uh, traditional institutions they're powerful uh, oh, and yeah. they're they're not going to just they're not going to lay down or and and actually in a more positive way it, to say they're seeing opportunity like the rest of us are seeing it. this is going to be uh, I'm predicting February March of this year this is going to be this this whole market's gonna just bounce back with a vengeance and uh, and people are seeing it um absolutely so yeah so and but it's just interesting um just how uh, you know this was inevitable yeah well w when i first started buying crypto like several of the australian banks started blocking crypto purchases so you weren't even allowed to buy it with your money and now we've seen like one of the biggest banks in australia the anz bank now has launched its own cryptocurrency and all this sort of stuff so yeah they have kind of they've taken the 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 peel and they're all on board and i think they'll <laughs> they'll, they'll flip to the whole nft and web3 space because they've kind of been through all that with the crypto thing and they, they kind of get it now, all the red nosed bankers, they kind of get it or they've been forced to get it by the young execs. Um, I think they'll be all over this, like you say, really, really quickly. Yeah. And, yeah. and there's an, uh, there's enough, um, there's enough executives who would be my age that, yep. uh, um, who did grow up with an open mindset, like the old, the old school who are 70s, 80s, they're, 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 re um, they're retiring faster than they're being replaced. So, um, and, and even with just, even with just the internet and web two and everything, I thought, um, th those people who are in power now, you know, they, they, grew, they were 20 something when the dot com boom hit and they realized the power of change. So, and technology. Now, this is interesting here. It says D DBS will acquire a three by three plot of land um, in the sandbox metaverse, which will be developed with immersive elements such as buildings, plants, and animals. Now, choose. We've talked about this as going along with the whole um, Mark Cuban thing about what's the point of buying virtual real estate if you don't have a community. Well, if you look at the sandbox metaverse, it's just. It just looks like a big giant advertising space. Yes. Where people buy their little plot of land and they put yes. their avatar on it. But is anybody actually doing anything? Their 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 daily daily active or their monthly active users numbers. There's nothing. If you go there and enter these places, there's there's nobody there. 
And I would love to see, take a peek at their Discord because I know the Upland Discord, um, the community is amazing. You have people mm. like onboarding, um, answering questions, creating their own businesses. Like you're right. I Every time we, we compare the two, Upland is like businesses for the people and Sandbox and Decentraland are celebrities and big companies. What's this? Yes. CBS chief executive... Mr. Gupta said biggest changes in the world of finance have been catalyzed by digital advancements over the last decade. In the coming decade, driven by new technologies such as artificial intelligence and blockchain, these shifts have the potential to be even more profound. Yeah, and that's exactly what kind of Jeff was alluding to there. Now, I don't mm -hmm. know if it's a missed up. Okay. Now, I, just, I, I, got, I got a laugh of that quote because there's no way in God's green earth did that guy say those words <laughs> that, 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 that was written by a pr that that, that that they should actually have the the a photo of the pr agent right beside that that or or give qu credit to the to the the marketing person who wrote that because that is not a human co a, a quote nice <laughs> that's the <laughs> You gotta well, stop making me laugh, cheese. I got stitches in my lip. I'm gonna rip me stitches. <laughs> well, all right. We have to remember also, uh, Animoca has investments in both Upland and, and the Sandbox. So yep. you don't know. Maybe like because we right now we're getting we're getting stuff in little by little, but it has utility. Yep. It's not just gonna be a, like a a place you could go into and look around or a nice looking fern outside or yes. like a cat meowing. Um, our uh, uplands, I have to stop saying our, uplands utilities are um, like the football stuff you could collect. You can make upix on the businesses, the properties that you can get dividends on. Um, that you can mint, you can flip it, like you could start racing, you have businesses, meta ventures. So <clears throat> it's different than just walking around, but I would definitely like to see more businesses coming to Upland, but the same as with the businesses we currently have, where it includes yeah. the people. Yeah, we've, we've been speculating for a while that between all of these various metaverses, I would imagine there's going to be a system where there's portals where you can jump from one to the next and that sort of thing. And this kind of speaks to that as well. Metaverse technology, while still evolving, could also fundamentally change the way banks interact with customers and communities. So yeah, that, that, that's the key point there, the customers and the communities. That's what all of the Web3 space is kind of angling towards, you know, community, you know, that sort of stuff. So Given the speed of change, experimenting and learning by doing enables us to best test potential, the potential of these various technologies. Oh, and it, is, it is a Mr. Gupta, you're right. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And I think that's all fluff at the end. But yeah, that, that's pretty cool. Yeah. We shall have to see. <coughs> DBS is the first Singapore company to partner the Sandbox and the first local bank to make a foray into the metaverse. HSBC in March, which we talked about, became the first global bank part to partner with the Sandbox, which is a subsidiary of Hong Kong. Yeah, we talked about that back in the day. Yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's again, it's one of those snowball situations. If this bank gets involved, then that bank will, and then the execs are saying, hang on a minute, we better take a closer look at this because that's where, all, where our customers are headed. So we shall see. Well, that, that'll be the interesting thing is whether or not or which one of these uh, companies survive beyond all the investment, which which ones like when you say in that they have almost zero monthly active users. Um, yeah. So if you're like eventually big corporations will say, well, actually, you know, I've, I've we've we've spent spent X amount of dollars on putting our logos and avatars all through this, this yeah. virtual, this metaverse, but nobody's actually looking at, like nobody's seeing them. Um, we're not getting much of a return on investment. Um, so there, there has to be some form of gamification or something built Utility. into these. And I love you, like, Jeff. Uh, you are the king of um, 
segways. <laughs> nailing these segways. Have a look at this for a segue now. Um, okay. Well, my just, kids... be, be, uh, oh, sorry. Be, before you get on there, if I'm the king yep. of segways, because I know you're on the Gold Coast, yep. I ended up in the Gold Coast emergency room because I damn near killed myself on a Segway. Uh, <laughs> only, <t> <laughs> oh, oh, only time in my life that I have ever been knocked out, uh, knocked out unconscious because I, I, I grew up skiing. Um, I was yeah. quite a good skier when I, when I was growing up and I worked in the mountains in British Columbia and that sort of thing. So I got on this Segway when my wife and I were up there and I decided, oh, this is just like skiing. I'm going to see how fast I can go and see if I can't oh, no. jump it. Oh, and, and so, <clears throat> so I went around a corner, just flying, got caught in some sand. And if you've ever skied and did a Segway, it's the polar opposite. Like when you, when you're skiing, if you ever get into trouble, you put your weight on your outside foot which is the exact wrong thing to do on a Segway. <laughs> and I, I went flying in the bush and my wife said she came around the corner. I uh, was on this trail and she came around the corner and she saw this and she went, what kind of idiot leaves their Segway just laying in the middle of the path? And then she looked over <laughs> and, and there like I was. In the bush? <laughs> my husband. <laughs> yeah. I, I, but I, but I was laying in the bush, unconscious <laughs> twitching and she, Ooh, and nice. I woke up and, and uh, so I, I got to say the Gold Coast Emergency Room is, is, is a wonderful hospital. Great nurses, great. Uh, but anyway, so I am not the king of segways. In oh fact, I'm an idiot on a segway. <laughs> okay, well, we'll, we'll run with that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, oh, sorry. and just, just to say out loud, Upland is on the path to being the world's largest blockchain metaverse with over 150,000 monthly active users. Okay, go ahead, Ben. Yeah, see. That's oh. the oh. article that we just read said 600,000. So there, there's a, some kind of disconnect there somewhere. But what we do know is it's a lot compared to the other metaverses. Yes. So, yes. Now, speaking of that, um, my children, I've got three kids, uh, 12, 10, and 8. They've all been mad about Minecraft for the, since they could basically walk and talk, basically, or even before. They are all slowly, one by one, and it started with, with um, Cheese Nose, uh, Keanu, my middle child. Um, he's just fanatical about technology. Now, he's all in on Roblox. Now, the last few episodes, we've been seeing more and more about Roblox. Now, check this one out. He's such a smart kid. We did an interview with him. Oh, my gosh. Yes. So the Roblox is testing dynamic billboards in the metaverse with the new ad platform. The platform wow. will share revenue from the from the three D ads with developers. So this is the latest craze that all of the kids and that are really diving into, and the Roblox is leaning heavily into angling towards like a immersive uh, metaverse Web three point space. And yet now they're going to front load this with advertising. Like I would love to become a business in, in Roblox. Like I know my niece and my best friend's kids, they play it with, like they love it. They're addicted and it's such a great place to go and make money. Like in Upland, we are uh, creating outdoor decorations as Ben and my and Detex uh, Meta Venture are our Upland business, right? And we actually like we, a detail creates it in blender and like i add some textures to it and like i would love to take that and bring it to other platforms such as roblox like i don't know it's exciting it's 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 a really exciting time you better get in there and start clicking clickety clicking so, <laughs> it says here, as as companies continue to flock to the metaverse, Roblox is rolling out a new ad product that will allow brands to place 3D promos within the virtual worlds and games hosted on its platform. The gaming platform plans to test new types of immersive ads for select brands in coming months with sites set on a full launch of its self-serve ad system sometime next year. Roblox will share revenue from the ads with developers of the experiences and games within which they are placed, although it declined to reveal exact terms. This is pretty freaking huge yeah yeah I, and then roblox is the perfect place to do it like those kids yeah. they spend money on nothing yeah. 
like my niece oh can i have a hundred dollar roblox rob robux, robux. Yep. and yep, i'm like yep. sure yeah here <laughs> what are you gonna buy oh this one item this yep. one item and i'm like you're yeah. crazy this is your money we'll do whatever you want but it's a gold mine it's a gold mine absolutely yeah no, it's, uh, if you, um my little guy he's he loves minecraft as well and if you can tap into that kind of energy um and monetize it and minecraft's done well with monetizing just the way they do it but to to, to put in ads and stuff well they have um, that they have it it's the ads, uh, this, yeah this looks this looks pretty good yeah absolutely so it says one of Roblox's new ad formats will consist of static images positioned like billboards or plastered onto buildings within a given world. Another will function as portals that transport users to a separate branded experience of the sort that Roblox has increasingly worked with advertisers to build in its like corner a mall. Of the universe. Like a mall yep. inside inside the game. It's it's games like Keanu was trying to explain it to me because I asked him, so what is this Roblox all about? And he's he's basically saying Anybody can build games within the games, mm -hmm. but there's um, you have to pay to get your game featured or to get any sort of traction. So it's 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 kind of a pay to Ooh. pay to win situation. It's not really like because all right. So my niece first went there to play the games, and we played this zombie game together. And there's also this uh, job simulator game which is pretty good for little kids to like to learn or whatever. But then they also have where you could build the game and she actually built this obstacle course thing and yep. she didn't pay to advertise it, but you, you see people there on her course, like just running yes. around it and trying to finish. That's cool. Yeah. It's, it's also, it's all about Roblox is all about user generated content. And that's what it says here. While individual creators have linked of have inked one-off deals with brands for displays or product placement, the platform hasn't offered developers a formal avenue for doing so at scale until now. As a platform that relies primarily on user-generated content, Roblox has an interest in providing tools for developers to better monetize and fund the experiences they create. Yeah, this is this is um, massive. Yeah. Oh, I was telling you this before, Ben. I'm like, Roblox, that's where the money is. <laughs> yep. Because you want to sell to the kids. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, I want because... to break their parents' credit cards. <laughs> a lot of the a lot of the big gaming YouTubers now are also switching over to, like, they're, they're showcasing all of these games. So you can see a situation where it's kind of a, a feedback loop where the YouTubers are in influencing the games that are played and that's influenced on who's who's got the advertising budget behind it all. It's it's all very, very interesting where this is headed. I think this, this will go back to what we were saying earlier about um, <clears throat> the, the, the companies out there that got the big, the deep pockets who realize that this isn't going to go away. They're, they're going to step in and um, and monopolize this if uh, because they'll, they'll like someone like Nike or something will just come in and go, let's spend a couple hundred million and let's let's take let's take over this. True, but at the same time, I do feel like like regular people can come in with with interesting stuff as well that that maybe know the. Um, the customer like base and and because like let's be honest it's a bunch of like seven to 15 year olds playing roblox yes about uh, and uh you do get some adults there that play with them like me i, I play with my niece yeah. and um you see a distinct style with these kids like like they're not gonna they're not gonna want to have have a a, a nike they're gonna want to have something really unique and different and and mm -hmm. cutesy and and uh or skateboardy like skateboard shoes might come back into style i remember i used to sell shoes on the upper upper east side back when i was in my early 20s and uh back then like skateboard shoes i can't remember the name were in style like i i think you like you'll have to really 
be creative and get outside of the box to kind of reach this kind of, like it's good like ben has that that the the kids that age to kind of give him what's hip <laughs> it, 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 it'll be interesting to see if uh if something like this goes the way of um i don't know if you've seen it ben with your kids but you know ryan's toy world have you seen yeah. that kid yeah it'll be interesting to see how many parents go wait i can exploit my kids uh to make a lot of money here uh i'll i'll do some development in the back end or uh, somehow and make it look like my seven-year-old's doing all these amazing things that um, kid has fun that kid has so fun. much fun oh uh, yeah. but if you, if you have kids <laughs> If you ever want to, if you ever want to get close to jumping off a bridge, uh, get your. Uh, if your kid watches an hour of Ryan, Ryan, oh yes, and you can hear, and you can hear that family in the background, like, mm. like you, you're, you're just about to ready to start jamming not uh, like forks in your eyes and um, <laughs> like it's that, that like it, is the way uh, to be. <laughs> That's oh. me. <laughs> what 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 really interests me about this is is finding out who the gatekeepers are going to be like at, at the moment we've got yes. kids building games within roblox now it, it's a very simplified platform now it's it's not necessary these aren't big budget games that are getting all the attention it's the kids have come up with some kind of hook they've found some kind of fun element in the game they've constructed now are they going to be the gatekeepers for who can advertise within their experiences? If that's the case, then we're going to see a situation where, like you said, Jeff, seven-year-olds will be signing sponsorship deals for yes. you know for advertising within their user-generated content. That's going to get quite squirrely, but very interesting. Yeah, and and I think what um, I, I, from what I can tell from Minecraft, they just did it. In, uh, it, I'm wondering if, or like, really, they're they. It seems they're taking the social media model, which is just everybody. Like, we don't really care. Let's just get millions of people to yeah. to build, and hopefully, you know, a small percentage of those attract users and. You know, or or just like Spotify or something like that, where yeah, uh, like ninety nine percent of the songs. That's an arbitrary number. I don't know what the actual number is, but <laughs> most songs on there uh, would would have a couple hundred listeners a, a month, where a handful get all the tra the attraction. And I'm sure yeah, that's absolutely. gonna that, that's the model. Yeah, and, and that feeds back to the YouTubers, <clears throat> the big YouTubers getting involved. Well, whatever they look to play, that's gonna that's gonna be popular. The popular <clears throat> thing. So it's very very cool. Now, again, that kind of segues onto our last two, which we'll do these last two as a package deal. Now we know that within the Upland Metaverse, um, we have recently had car NFTs come into play and like um, racing and this and that and the other thing. Now, we do know that. Um, Upland is trying to work with uh, car manufacturing brands to bring them into the metaverse. And they have said that users will be able to create their own car brands and sell their own car NFTs and this, that, and the other thing. Well, there's two examples here where people aren't waiting. They're just doing it. Renault has inked a partnership with the Sandbox to bring automotive experiences to the metaverse. And I'll just flick straight over to the other one as well. Um, Ford prepares, prepares to enter the metaverse with virtual automobiles and NFTs. So Ford and Renault, that's not exactly small companies we're talking about here. Uh -huh. So again, um, sand, we got the sandbox mentioned here. Uh, I, I uh, they're why. late. Upland already did it in your face, Sandbox. <laughs> yeah, but Sandbox has signed the partnership. So what, what big deal has Upland signed? For cars none that we know about as yet so none, none that we know about i don't know that we can say in your face just quite yet <laughs> so, yes. yeah but why does it have to be a big company like we can like they have um whoop, car nfts that we can race around them and do business with 
and well, make, it just comes to money. the big companies come with big names and big big eyeballs, more eyeballs. So. Ah. Yeah, if you get bit, Joe Blow's machine shop signed a deal with the Upland Metaverse, everyone, nobody's going <laughs> to care about that. So, sorry, Jeff, I cut you off there. What were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say, and they, it's it's their big marketing dollars because it, um, yep. the, and and what's <clears throat> just like the the Nike NFTs and the Tiffany NFTs, they they they're not doing this because they love NFTs. They're doing this to sell cars. Yes. They just they're they're just smart enough that they're getting on to something that is hip and new. And there's a whole there's hundreds of millions of play, people who are in this space, and they're thinking, well, let's let's be the coolest car company. Um, yeah. So they they they're they're wanting to sell cars. And it's a reach around situation. Like yes, they want to sell cars, but. With Renault signing the deal to Sandbox, that kind of gives massive legitimacy to the Sandbox metaverse as well. So there's also that whole angle. Yeah, uh, uh, absolutely. Um, what, but what what will be interesting, I don't think it'll happen, but um, depending on how, uh, I don't know what the word would be, um, how emotionally charged the sandbox users are and if they go oh you're, you're now you're now selling out you know it's like yeah it's like it's like the um you know metallica fans who all went crazy when they did the when they did the symphony album yes. like it, it's yeah. it's like oh you're selling out you're you're not who you used to be but i don't think that's the case i think for just like metallica <clears throat> for every 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 fan they lost, they gained three. So, yeah, absolutely. Where you at, Chase? You're on mute. Each. What are you doing? Sorry, I had to <laughs> sneeze. I didn't want to. <laughs> I forgot to put him back. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, I, th I think it's. A bit strange. Like the sandbox metaverse has hardly any users, hardly any active monthly users. Um, but all of these big companies are just piling in. I guess the sandbox must have one hell of a marketing team behind it. Uh, well, I think what don't underestimate the ignorance of investors. Um, <laughs> and, and I'm I'm sure it, there's a there's something at play here is. Some CEO at Ren some C level person at Renault went, we need to get involved in in NFTs in this this whole thing. Does anybody know anything about it? Yeah, I've yeah. heard of this company called Sandbox. Great, mm -hmm. get get in touch with them. Let's make a deal. And then nobody went and thought, um, because and okay, start Googling who's who's in this space. And it, and then all of a sudden sandbox is on page one every time you Google something. And then yep. you go, oh, they, they must be the biggest. Let's let's make a deal with them. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a good point too. So it says <clears> here that Renault is not the first automaker aiming to place products in the metaverse. In fact, the metaverse has become a popular destination for these companies. Volkswagen organized an advertising campaign in April called Game On, in which users had to hunt NFTs in a metaverse environment. It mentions Nissan, Hyundai. Um, we even know that... Um, the Mercedes Formula One team did a whole bunch of stuff with NFTs on the FTX platform. So, yeah, it's it's all happening with cars. So that's about Renault and Sandbox. Now, I don't think... Do you know the Ford one, Cheese? What metaverse was that on? Ford um, the, I don't know if they metaverse. mention it. They just said that they're... <laughs> this is interesting a trademark application covering its future efforts in the metaverse and nft space comes only a month after the company announced huge staff cuts <laughs> ouch Jeez. american car manufacturer ford motor company is the latest car brand prepping its entry into the world of nfts and the metaverse filing 19 trademark applications across its major car brands oh now that's interesting Actually going ahead to, here we go. The trademark applications cover virtual cars, trucks, vans, SUVs, and clothing. Jesus, this is what's happening <coughs> with Upland. I know, that's what I was saying. Mm -hmm. um, 
also covering a proposed online marketplace for NFTs. So it sounds like they're trying to do their own thing. I, I think that's inevitable too. Yes, look at this. Ford is making a big move into the metaverse. The company has filed 19 trademarks, blah, 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 blah. This, this is in a tweet. And it mentions a whole bunch of the models. According to documents filed by Ford on September 2nd, the car manufacturer plans to create downloadable artwork, text, audio, and video featuring its cars, FUV, SUVs, blah, 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 which will be authenticated by NFTs. So instead of when Lambo, it's going to be when Mustang? Maybe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there are also intentions to create a marketplace to promote the digital artwork of others through a website along with online retail store services featuring NFTs and digital collectibles. Well, there you go. It doesn't mention anything. So it sounds like it's just going out and doing its own thing. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're shopping around still. May or maybe they're in something with Upland and they can't say yet. Yes, well, that's that's kind of <laughs> what my brain went to when I read that. When you read virtual cars, virtual trucks, SUVs, SUV, well, I can't say SUVs for some reason, but yeah. Mm. That might be a scoop. Mike can down this guy below and that thing looks kind of like X1. I, I I could I could see this guy. like w what I'm reading into that is potentially that Ford's is going out and getting a, a bunch of developers and saying, "Hey, build this cool metaverse where people can drive around in in Ford cars yep. and and just create their own thing." They already um, have that. That's called Upland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big big companies like big companies out of Detroit don't like to uh, um, to give anything away. So yeah. if they can if they can control it, well, it kind of hmm. speaks to the point that we've been making on this show since it started. Where Web Web three and all of this, it doesn't have to be like this massive. You don't not going to have to wear goggles and all this sort of stuff to be involved. It it can <clears> be <throat> simply like taking your website to the next level to be more immersive experiences for your customers. Well, that that I, that's one hundred percent the strategy that I've I'm applying to the Laughing Otter is make it use the technology of web three and the excitement of web three. And what I think is the most powerful part of web three is the emotionally charged, intelligent, driven people who are in this space and you, and you harness all that, but don't make it so, so exclusive that you're alienating a large percentage of the, the population. There, there's, there is an opportunity here for to leverage all the great stuff that that web 2 has done get rid of some of the bad and add on another layer it's uh and and really like i, I was in a uh, a twitter space the other day where somebody's like no it's got to be web 3 you you're, you're either web 3 or you're web 2 there's no in between i'm like what technology has ever been like that you know yeah. like cars were built on on a four-wheel chassis that because that was the most stable for horse carriages like you know like the, there was yep. everybody builds on top of what was done in the past so why are we why are we ignoring 30 years of development and stuff that's happening in web 2 um because yep. not all of it's bad <laughs> like most of it's great so anyway there, there's a little rant Oh, that's, that's you're a good you're way to wrap of, us up, cheese. Well, <laughs> let's pour let's pour us a glass of of uh, Jeff. Let who are you? What what is your <laughs> project and and what do you do inside and outside of the metaverse? All right, so my project's called the Laughing Otter, and about two years ago, I started it with this goal. A simple goal of making the world a happier place, one person at a time. And now, and then about a year ago, I discovered Web3. And so now I'm leveraging blockchain technology in a number of different ways. Um, we'll 
will be releasing series of NFTs based uh, both or uh, both Laughing Otter branded um, along with partnerships with artists and not for profits. Um, and the the whole concept of Laughing Otter is to just give people lots of different ways to connect, uh, to grow this co community around just finding ways to be happier and to give back to the community. It's a big, a big part of what we're doing is, um, like I mentioned, partnering with not-for-profits and getting involved and giving back to the community, primarily in the area of giving kids uh, a better chance in life and promoting positive mental health. The, the website, thelaughingotter.com, is nothing but positive news. So everything that's uh, trying to celebrate what's good in the world, not what's, uh, what the, the, the media has us believe, that we're all evil and hating each other and all that <laughs> kind of stuff. And, um, we're, we'll, also be, uh, we'll also be launching very shortly, within the next week or so, a... a um, the working title right now is Founders NFT. So for $100, you can be one of the first 500 people to own a, uh, a little part of of the Laughing Otter. Um, that, that $100 will not only um, get you a very exclusive NFT that uh, in years to come will be worth a lot, uh, but you will also get uh, financially based tokens once they're released. So we'll be releasing the Laughing Otter token um, sometime in the next three to four months. Um, and when that happens, you'll be able to uh, um, to say that you were one of the first people. Um, very much uh, a community that really believes that we can make a difference in this world and change the lives of people all over the place. And just, you know, I, I got this really simple phrase or like th thing that's in my head. And that is we all should be having a lot more fun. We all deserve to be having a lot more fun. Um, and, and for some reason we just like to gravitate to stuff that's negative and uh, beats us up. Um, but I'm the laughing otter is here to combat that and, and, and really make a difference. So it's, it's basically a place where artists, <clears throat> um, very uh, creative minds can come together in a positive way and just kind of like share their passion and, uh, you know, uh, be in, just be in an a aura of positivity. Yeah, it's, it, it's more than that. It, it is... Um... It, it, it's it's really for everybody and it's it's a whole community both online and offline um on chain off chain we are building out you can see uh on the the um the the uh the banner there we're building out um a metaverse that's called art infinitum which is just an infinite world of art where people can just keep building on different genres of art um, but it's it's more than that. It's this the Laughing Otter is a branding exercise. It is creating this brand that's synonymous with giving back to the community, making people happy. Whether you're in Web three or not, you're able to to find reasons to be happy. Um, we have events that are happening, everything from music concerts to wine tastings. Uh, we have I'm working with an artist and a an educator on a series of uh, the Laughing Otter children's books, uh, which are all each the series is each each chat or each book will be one of will focus on one of the seventeen uh, United Nations Sustainability Goals. Uh, there's merchandising. There's there um, retreats. All these things of just ways that people can connect and be happier. Um, so yeah, it's, somebody mentioned it to me the other day. They said, you're like, you're like the Walt Disney of web three. <laughs> I like you, that. Like, like you, you, you have this mission of just making people happy and then just providing all sorts of ways that 
people can connect just like Disney, like Disney, you can, you can go on a cruise. You can, the, you can go to the Anaheim mighty ducks, uh, ice hockey team. You can go, you can buy a makeup bag or you can go to one of the Disneyland or Disney world and a million things in between. Um, but it's all under just entertainment and ways to connect and be happy. Um, and behind the scenes, very much involved with, uh, getting like supporting, uh, like I mentioned, not for profits. Um, the, I got a, a, a photo was sent to me the other day on, um, from, a, an orphanage in Uganda that, um, I'm involved with and it, all these kids holding up a sign that said, and, and it, and it said, Jeff, thank you for putting smiles on our faces. And, you know, speaking of smiles on faces, I didn't stop smiling for three days. I looked at that photo a hundred times because uh, it, awesome. it, 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 it solidified why we're doing this. So, yeah, that, that's the white paper. Anybody interested um, to getting in early? We're currently in the pre-seed round, but... Uh, that's about to fill up and then we'll be doing a seed round before the end of this calendar year. <laughs> um, uh, just reach out to me uh, or, and then hopefully people jump on our discord, get involved, be um, just find ways to, to be happier. And, yeah. and the one, one of the things with the, uh, with the, the founders NFTs, uh, we will be giving 10% to children's related charities um, to, because we put our money where our mouth is. No, uh, we I... don't, we don't, we just don't walk. We don't, we don't, we talk, we don't, we walk the talk uh, mm. as I guess how you say that. Um, <clears throat> and there's, what? yeah, there's lots of cool stuff on the roadmap. Um, what blockchain that, will you be on to the NFTs? Um, to be determined okay. right now. Yeah, um, it's still the, very early. Um, it's kind of not. It's it's early, but it's not early. Uh, there's a ton of stuff that's happening in the back, uh, behind the scenes. That's all coming together. Um, there are a lot of different options. Uh, what what is a possibility is that we'll end up with a few different blockchains for different components of. The laughing otter because some of them are better than others for different areas um in launching the founders nft um i'm working out with a company out of actually they're out of gold coast as well um and they have a marketplace and they're gonna just just for ease of use i've just partnered with them to um they know what they're doing and i um uh, like my resources are um, are working on other things so that you know I, I have a big belief that if somebody's good at what they do just why reinvent the wheel so at this stage we'll be launching just with a marketplace uh that will but it'll, it'll allow you to buy on multiple with multiple different currencies so yeah yeah no it's it's exciting it's super exciting times um i really believe that the laughing otter um well, I've invested two years in this, and I I just think that it's uh, um, can really make a difference in this world. It just I don't know if you guys ever the the video I watch all the time is the uh, the the guy in the the music festival somewhere in the states. He's on a hill and he starts dancing and he's having a great time, but he's all by himself, and everybody was laughing at him. And then two other people join him, and within two minutes or whatever the video goes everybody at this festival is dancing around this guy. And wow. that's, ki that's kind of how I feel about the laughing otter. Cause I, I now think that we're, we're probably about a, we're, we're just at that tipping point where everybody's going to start running down the hill and want, and going to be a part of it. And, um, just, uh, I, and the reason I did all this is when I, when I turned 50 a year and a half ago, I went, I'm not doing, the corporate world anymore um i uh i need the last third of my career to be about something more meaningful than just making money selling shitty software to people who you know 
who cares uh, and making making wealthy people more wealthy with no no reason um, the laughing otter uh, people who get involved the tokens are full financial tokens so there's a lot of utility and a lot of revenue generating um, uh, channels with built into the laughing otter so you will you will see a return on your investment um, that's quite positive and what a better way to make money than actually give children a fair start in life and to make people happy so it's it's I've, I've never had more fun in my life that's awesome yeah I like that I can't wait to see as this you know unfolds and whatnot Fine. very cool cool stuff and, and oh sorry I just want to say like when we put this out um we're going to have all your information and one of the challenges will be to kind of like you know go to your discord and tag me in there and like say a phrase so that way we have like the traffic coming through and people can find out more about your project and read the white paper themselves and go through it it was a very very awesome read and um just so everybody knows uh our, our very own DAC referred me to talk with Jeff and uh, that's how we connected, which is pretty awesome. Dak is very active in Upland, and he's actually part of the racing league that Upland, like he created for cool. Upland. So it's it's really cool the networking and meeting new people and, and finding these projects. I'm really glad, like, to have met you. Uh, I'm sorry, Ben. Go ahead. <laughs> once I stop, I'm like, once I start, I'm like Pringles. <laughs> no, it's just. Jack has been hooking us up left and right. He's a yeah, good friend of Chase and I both. So. Why well, hook them up? No, I was just too, interested. With that, that's pretty. In yes, absolutely. Um, that's pretty inspirational to hear you say stuff like that, Jeff. Now, is this something that you've moved into full time, or are you balancing this on top of other commitments? Um, I'm I'm full time. Um, 100 percent into this. Have been for two years. Uh, I can't go back now. Um, I told my wife we're. Uh, before I go back and work in the corporate world, we're selling everything and moving. Um, uh, we're moving to the country or something because I'm not doing it. Um, yeah. And but also, like it, this is this space is so much fun. Like you said there, Angela, that the 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 communities and the hookups. Like um, the other day, I was I was I was laughing because I uh, when I was talking to someone about that. I had a conversation with somebody um, and, and some multiple uh, people from every single continent in the world in one day, except for Antarctic, um, you know, <laughs> for obvious reasons. Um, not, not a lot of, not a lot of uh, penguins in the metaverse yet, but they're, but they're coming. Um, as, as, a user, as the user interfaces get more uh, and the onboarding gets easier, we'll get more and more penguins. But um no but it's it just it's just so much fun that you know i have a i met i met uh i met your colleague there and we had a great conversation and he he it, and he believed in what i'm doing and then he introduced us then uh then we connected and but one thing i will say about the laughing otter and when people do listen to what the vision is and what the goal is and it comes from the heart um, it's not a hard sell. Like it's not hard to sell. Let's make people happy, happier at a time when we've just come out of 10 years of the most polarizing news that we could ever have had. The negative impact of social media is so well documented. Then you layer COVID on top. And then there's been all sorts of real fun events. And a lot of them are conversations that should have happened a long time ago, but things like, me too and black lives matter and then you get Syri like syrian refugees now the war in ukraine like these are all big powerful um events that are, are, are just bombarding us and we're getting it from every direction um so people need a reason to connect again um and 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 be happy i have a theory that that web3 wouldn't be as powerful as it is if we hadn't have gone through all of that and, and are still going through what we've gone through over the last 30 years 
I mean, so, uh, sorry, after the last 10 years, because that's why these communities are so powerful because people just want to connect again. They, they, they're tired of the arguments and the, and the hatred. They want something to uh, uh, gravitate to that's positive, something we can get behind and, 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 and all work together. And I, I, the, the laughing otter um, is really channeling a lot of that energy. And, and, um, and as you can tell, when I start talking about it, I get, right, I get quite passionate about it. Like I like that. It, That's good. That means yeah, and, and, know. yeah, and and there there's a, there's some like not to to uh, uh, open the uh, rip back the covers too far, but there were some events in my life that you know are that led to the to when I decided I needed to do something different. Um, a mate of mine just. Prior to that, had hung himself. I had the birth of my child, which didn't, which was a, a bit challenging. Um, then and just and and then just my whole life, I've just uh, believed in the underdog. It's probably from being a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. Um, the and the, but it's just just this just overall belief that like we all deserve a fair start in life like it's it's to me in my very uh black and white mindset is how after five thousand years of of civilization are we so fucking stupid that there are kids in this world that can't even get fucking water yeah uh, like uh, and 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 then what do we can what do we bitch about like you know traffic <laughs> like you know like that's front page news yeah. you know it's, it's like a, like a, a, a sorry i was a little bit vulgar there but it's like I, I i can't be more blunt to say fuck we gotta do better yeah and i'm i'm hoping the laughing otter creates a voice for all of us to that because nothing good ever comes top down the politicians do not give a shit about anybody but themselves Absolutely. Let's not kid ourselves about that. Even the ones that kind of look like they are, they don't, they don't get there because they're, they're altruistic. They get there because they're self, um, self-interested, mm. but movements do happen from the ground up. Like, and, and that's been proven re recently. Like Black lives matter. Me too. Uh, climate change took one Swedish 16 year old to completely change the face of combating climate change. And that's because it, it created a movement and the laughing otter will be a movement. I, I, I put my hand on heart to tell you that. And anybody who wants to be, in, be get in early, you don't have to spend any money. Just be part of the community and be a voice and say, I care. We can do better. Let's give kids a fair start in life. And those that are struggling, let's give them a hand instead of stepping on their heads. You know, like it's ridiculous. And um, but there was a there was a great <clears throat> I'm a bit on a rant here. Uh, but there there was a great little quote from uh, not a huge MMA uh, fighter kind of fan. I was interested a little bit when it first came out, but. But there was a, a, a great quote from one of the fighters that just recently won a match. And he said his friend, he found out during the weigh-in that his friend had hung himself. And he said at the end of the match, um, I'd rather you cry on my shoulder than go to your funeral. And, mm. and that's the mentality we all should have. And, yeah, and you, you have kids, Ben. I, I do not understand how a, a parent cannot put yourself in the shoes of another parent that's watching. Like when my kid cries and I don't know why he's crying and maybe he's got a fever or something, whatever, why he's, and we can't figure out why he's crying. I'm within a 10 minute drive of seven or eight of the world's best hospitals. I can't imagine the hell of watching your kid cry and and there are no options and you can't make them cry and the only reason that they stop crying is cuz they're so weak yeah that they can't cry anymore like well, I, I, I yeah they, and that's 
Sorry, I I I, I went on a rant there, but it's real. It's no, we got I, I can. Better. I I had a bit of a dose of that myself. Um, with Keanu, who's the one of the kids that I was talking about previously. He he got seriously ill in Japan, and Japan has a exceptionally wonderful like um whole medical situation um you know state of the art all that this that and the other thing um it's largely free or the cost that you do have to pay is very minimal <coughs> however they work nine to five monday to friday not on weekends not on holidays so it's this re you, you don't want to break your arm on a friday afternoon before a long weekend oh you're going to be in God. all sorts of trouble so yeah, it was a weird situation like Keanu's sick we take him to our regular doctor he says yada 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 we take him back home he's not getting better in fact he's getting worse his fever's getting worse he's becoming not responsive so we take him to the hospital we get the run around at the hospital and they basically say you know there's not much we can do and like i'm losing my mind my wife's japanese she knows the system she knows she's got to play by the the system's rules but i'm just I'm ready to like grab somebody by the throat and say, get us a doctor. This is out of control. And it just so happened that uh, a pediatrician doctor who wasn't even supposed to be at work that day, um, he happened to come in he forgot some paperwork or something. And on his way back out, he, he kind of went to walk past us, but he stopped and he talked to my wife, like what's going on. And then, he stayed back, signed back in, and he got the ball rolling. And it turned out my son had a thing called Kawasaki disease, which can be quite serious if it's left untreated because it inflames all of the arteries in your whole body, basically. Wow. So, so that was a tiny glimpse. But, yeah, what you're saying is imagine being in a situation where there's not even the option to go to a hospital or something like that. that that's a completely different ball game. Or you're in a war zone and all of that infrastructure has been taken out. So, yeah. Yeah, and, and I just don't, I don't know how, as a parent, people can turn a blind eye to that. I don't yeah. get it. Like, I, it's not like I'm, I'm, I'm a superstar, give back every five minutes of my day. Um, like, I'm like everybody else. Like, you know, I'm working 16 hours trying to get this going. Mm. Um, and I have my own, so like, and I, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not like being holier than thou i get it i get why people are busy and 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 really we we hire people through our votes that are supposed to be fixing these things but they don't what i'm trying to do with the laughing otter and which i will do is create this community that gets the the loud uh, this loud voice just like greta thomberg did that starts get, and and then by doing that it gets big business, consumers, uh, and politicians aware that, wait a minute, actually helping kids around the world actually is important. We do want to make a difference. We do want to get, get a change. Um, so, and, and then, and also one of the things that um, a lot of not-for-profits are starting to figure this out, and it's been a while, like I, like, I don't know how old you guys are, but when I was growing up, um, it was all about famine in Africa and then there was live aid and all that. And, and, but one, one thing that uh, during that time that people started to get desensitized to was the, was the image of a, a, a young child in Africa, like completely like uh, suffering from starvation and stuff. And, it became, it, it started to desensitize that whole image and people mm -hmm. started going, well, what's the point? Like it, it's never going to going away. Nothing's changing. I, I, you know, I'm donating money every month and all I see is starving kids and they never, it never, it's thing. But the, the truth of the matter is actually all of that did make huge differences. Like the percentage of starving kids went way down and there are, a lot of initiatives that are happening that are really changing this world and and what not-for-profits are figuring out is that instead of promoting the reasons why you shouldn't do something or like the bad thing like we need to solve this problem they're now promoting hey look we raised a hundred dollars and this this child now going to school 
we yeah. we we raised five fifty thousand dollars and this village now has clean water and all these kids are now healthy and so they're promoting the positive side of things so people are seeing actually if we keep we keep doing this we are actually solving the problem because the reality is all major stats of where we're progressing as a human uh, as of humankind are all so much more improved than they were 30 years ago but but the media would have us believe that we're going backwards uh, and in, in a to hell in a handbasket mm. um so the laughing otter really wants to to um to harness that energy that let, let's promote what, what's good in humanity. Let's, let's remind people that actually our neighbors are pretty awesome. Doctor. Uh Oh, you're all buddy. Uh Oh, white whip. There you go. What? No. Doctor. <laughs> you're robotting Jeff. Hold Every on. Every country sec. in this world. Yeah, you're roboting on and off, so I can... People uh, like that, yeah. yeah. Uh, and we got to celebrate that. Um, and and as by celebrating that, we stop this uh, negative, like, like this negative perception of each other, and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy where we, we, where, where we're doing all that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it was, you were roboting on my end, cheese. I don't know. And sure you both were roboting on my end. <laughs> and I, I just noticed my laptop wasn't charged. So, yeah, well, Jeff, it's, you're clearly a super passionate dude. Um, and you got a, a lot of exciting and positive stuff going on. What, what's the, what's the best way that people can find out more? Obviously, we'll have links in the description, but where, where would you like to yeah, uh, touch place? Well, I, I think a big one is, uh, join the Laughing Otter Discord. Uh, that 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 gives us lots of opportunity to to share stuff with you. If you're looking for some positive news in your life, um, the Laughing Otter uh, We're rebuilding that website now, right as we speak, and the, it'll be a lot more robust. Um, but if you, yeah, if you follow on Twitter, Discord, the 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 website, you'll be up to date on everything we're doing. Um, and this community is about all of us so always up for ideas partnerships um if you want to host an event together uh, uh we have the laughing otter podcast that's just about to be released so if you want to be a guest on our podcast um yeah then yeah, yeah well fun. you're angela you're you're already you're already uh locked in so that's going to be fun <laughs> um uh, yeah so um yeah so yeah like the uh yeah, join join the movement, be a part of it, and hopefully, we can all make a difference. And uh, I like that. Yeah, I I'll tell you a little secret just for your listeners. I got, I have a, a <laughs> audacious goal that, uh, and it's been in my head for about twenty years. I want to hold this generation's live aid and give all money to kids. Um, I'm a, I'm a drummer and a huge music fan. Oh. I, I, I have this, like, I, and like anybody who starts anything you have, you have big dreams or whatever, but my, my little, the, the flag I'm running towards is I want to be standing on stage at Wimley stadium or somewhere like that, looking out and go and with, with a whole bunch of people who, you know, help make this happen. And look out and go, fuck, we did this. And as a result, 2,000 schools just got built. 500 new hospitals just got got put in. You know, 30 million kids now get clean water that they didn't have before we did this. And that's, maybe it doesn't happen. Maybe it will. Um, a very simplistic man uh, from a pretty average band made it happen. <laughs> 30 uh, some odd years or 40 some odd years ago now um so we can do this let's cool. and yeah it'd be pretty cool to do yeah. it's good to have goals and yeah. maybe you can do it maybe Wembley you might be selling yourself short there maybe you can do it in a virtual sense and be open to wow, that, 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 that would be, well that that's exactly that now like yeah 
50, like I, I read that forty uh, percent of the world, I think, watched Live Aid, and that was pre-internet. So That's with crazy. yeah, with 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 the internet, with Web three, with the metaverse, um, I think we could get that to 70 percent of the world. Was that that uh, song? Feed the feed the world, make it a better yeah. place. Yeah, yeah, I love that song. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're up, and, we're uh, up there in age, Ben and I. We're <coughs> spring chickens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're right yeah. behind you, actually. All right. <laughs> yeah, right. Thank you very much for your time, Jeff. We yeah, really appreciate you. finding out. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. That was it was great fun. Um, and let's don't be strangers. Um, and uh, hopefully our paths will cross again very soon. Well, Angela, you're going to be on the podcast. We'll be talking to you. And um, Ben, let me know. Um, uh i'm up in the gold coast next week so uh be good to hook up and say hello there if, if we can share a beer oh yeah absolutely mate yeah even if it's not part of that thing let me know i'll see see if we can cross paths somewhere that's cool I okay like that. all right guys well i wish you all the best and uh that was great fun yeah all so right. like take Get us, us away. out of here cheese stay fresh cheese bags Good day, sickos. Okay, to get your hands on this episode's free custom more cheese NFT, as always, like and subscribe. Then jump on into the Laughing Otter Discord server and tag cheese. Say hi, Jeff, and let them know something positive that's happening in your life recently. <laughs> Later. Wait, hang on a minute. For those what? of you who have made it this far, it's our one year anniversary, Ben. That's right, a full year and 50 episodes <laughs> of nonsense in the worst show ever. <laughs> To commemorate that achievement and your sick ongoing support, I'll be creating a special edition Worst Show Ever Anniversary NFT. To get that <laughs> NFT in your greasy little wax wallet, drop us some kind of twisted happy anniversary shout out in the YouTubes for this episode. Later.